I think enough time has passed in the world of that time I got reincarnated as a slime that we admit that Rimuru isn't actually the one in charge of Tempest. Which may ruffle some Rimuru fanboy feathers, but we have to be honest. Is he really the one pulling the strings at the end of the day? No. And the moment at the very end of the episode proves as such. So who is the one in charge? Is it Shion? No, she can she can freak our boy out. The Diablo? No. Rimuru still still hangs over them. Uh, what what about Geld? As soft as that cinnamon roll is, and how much of a good boy he is. No, not him either. It's Shuna. Shuna is the true leader of Tempest. And if anyone at this point truly disagrees with that statement, they severely underestimate her mom energy. Because the only character that could truly, like, shake Rimuru to his core to the point of not wanting to get up or disappoint would be Shuna. There is something about how she navigates this cast like she is everyone's mom, and it just feels like every time that aura sparkles around her, it's like everyone disappointed. Like, who snuck their hand in the cookie jar because you're about to lose that hand? And it kills me every single time I see her shake down the cast, given that we're literally dealing with some of the most ridiculously broken characters. And we have a demon lord in question, who's 10% of the time things happen in the way he wants, and the other 90% of the time... He couldn't tell you what the hell's going on. The fact that he didn't even know what his people were going to bring up at the at the science fair, all things considered, really speaks volumes to the amount of cruise control Rimuru's on. But it does bring up the question, is that cruise control eventually going to bite Tempest in the ass? I guess only time will tell. Of course, I do have full live reactions over on Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thought to any of these slime episodes, you know it's going to be over there exclusively. So, another really, really fun episode. I know everyone's talking about, oh, you know, next season, season after that, th those are the crazy arcs going to blow the anime community away. I'm sure they will, and I enjoy that stuff, but as I said pretty quickly into the second core, this is my favorite type of slime content. Whatever people want to say is like their peak tensor, they can do that, that's their opinion, but to me, this is what peak tensor looks like. The economic stuff, the civilization stuff, the meetings that are really just incredibly enjoyable, because... Slime action and, and crazy stuff is very fun, but them talking about action is just, it, it can get rather boring. Even though it's still enjoyable, it just isn't the same type of fun factor. But look at them just talking about, like, the big meeting of this episode was not being able to pay off their debts. Because they are a relatively new nation, you know, which, which countries, which areas accept what for currency, you know, yeah, we got all this money from you know, slang douchebag, but at the end of the day, that's not going to pay off our debts. We can't just defer to loans and stuff, you know. It's that type of stuff that should be more boring, and in most anime, this would be the more boring meeting compared to talking about all the setup and, uh, you know, how we're going to go slay our enemy. But this is where Tensor shines. I'm sorry, it, it really, really is. And it was just so fun once again, because rather than just making this festival something where they just go, okay, we're just going to have a shit ton of fun for two episodes, just show all these different attractions, each episode, they show a little bit of it, so we got to see the um, the big building where they're showing off all their inventions, such as the healing potion, which can not only heal you, but can heal your blade, which is ridiculous. We have stuff like the concert, so we had this big theater hall where we saw this big orchestra. I mean, there's this one big boy in the background beating on the drums, just love seeing that. And then Shuna and Shion came up and did this elegant performance. Stuff like that is really fun. Well, also, you can't just call this a simple, you know, filler episode where it's not progressing the plot because it is because it also continues to show the different struggles that a newfound nation such as Tempest and most importantly, a recently declared demon lord faces in the times of economic turmoils and, you know, how to pay off your debts, this, that, and the third. And obviously as well, they bring up the fact that, you know, there's at least two presents in this area in terms of Tempest that have come in for this festival that can't be trusted. One of which is guaranteed to be Yuki, which Rimuru, even though he doesn't really show it, you you assume he's uh, he's been keeping an eye on Yuki, right? Because we know Yuki's a bit of a scumbag. And the other one is most likely Maribel, I assume. I mean, it, it is entirely possible. I mean, her entire presence being there most likely you know is to be a spy so you'd have to assume it's her but then again they could sneak a, a sneak attack in and give someone else the uh the the ominous aura but like the idea that 
there is some people obviously you can't trust and you know the immediate cutaway to yuki sitting there it's like oh man we, we, we just need to toss this boy we just know he's up to no good but it's just so fun like we almost had a kid get isekai this episode the fact that ken uh pretty much called one of the strongest characters in currently tempest old and she drew a blade on a how old is the kid like 8 12 years old i don't know but like seriously man that that kid saw his grandma at the pearly gates in that moment and immediately knew the assignment to just apologize ridiculously and just say i was wrong you are damn did you just turn 18 you're you're young as shit girl he knew the assignment after he saw that blade and uh i thought that was a very funny moment but just a very enjoyable episode. I mean, back when season two aired, we got blessed with probably the best airing order of slime possible. We got core one of season two, then we had slime diaries, and then we had core two of season two. And slime diaries, man, I'm telling you, that is such a good show. And there's actually a lot of Tensor fans who never jumped aboard, but man, I'm telling you, especially if you like what this core is doing, like the, the reason I like this so much is it feels like Tensura just a little more focused on plot because Tensura was a lot more slice of life about the daily adventures of Tempest and that stuff's amazing but like add in a bit of the economic stuff you know Rimuru progressing his kingdom and everything and you have a recipe for success though it was nice to see actually the very beginning of the episode in terms of you know showing off basically your technology because it's more than just getting people to come work for Tempest in terms of general manual labor things like that that's going to be important but it's also about getting scientific minds and brilliant people also to want to maybe move in and kind of help progress this nation and showing off something like hey could a healing potion mend a sword of course it can't they do it and then they're just blown away stuff like that is clearly not going to be found outside of tempest and it's very quickly word of mouth is going to spread about how incredible this nation is and you can just tell why this is more than just having some country fair or something like that where people have a little fun, they go on their merry way. It's about having fun and also show that this is the nation where, like, people are going to quickly start talking about how this is the place that 100 years from now is going to be the most developed and powerful area probably in the world, just given clearly the brilliant minds behind it. But most importantly, we do have to all accept this is not up for debate. Shuna is the true leader of Tempest. Rimuru just keeps the seat warm. <laughs> Let me know what you're thinking down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Of course, ring that bell. And like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon. And hey, while you're over there, I'll give you a video shout out. All right, so today we have Pranay Sumshwar, Darian Smith, Rajver Mullins, Diedrich Savan, Davlin, Luke3496, Brandon Logren, Extran, Jessica Compton, Fate, Snake Eater 7 Nathan Semichuk, and we also have Zeshram. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care, and if you all have a Shuna in your life, keep on her best behavior. <laughs> have a good one.